Aloha everybody. Uh, my name is Rick Barboza and I'm co-owner of Huiku Maoli Ola Native Hawaiian Plant Nursery and we're located in Haiku Valley on the island of Oahu. Today I'll be talking to you about a few native plants that we have here at our place uh, that are good for landscaping. A lot of them have a few misconceptions that people think you know won't make them uh, to be able to grow at their house but that's uh, totally false. So the first plant that I would like to talk about uh, is this plant right here. It's probably my most favorite native Hawaiian plant uh, and probably one of the most recognized native plants. This is Ohia Lehua. Uh, this one will actually have uh, an orange flower but it's found on pretty much all of the Hawaiian islands, uh, the major Hawaiian islands. Uh, and the misconception is, is that most people think that it can only grow up at higher elevations. Well, well, in actuality, that plant can be found from near the ocean all the way up to above 6,000 feet in elevation. So, and, uh, so it can grow pretty much anywhere. And it used to be found everywhere. Uh, today, because we have so much uh, construction and and we have so much people here now, uh, all of those have been cut down and now you can only find it up at the higher elevations. But it can be grown in pretty much anybody's yard. Uh, it likes a lot of sun. It doesn't need too much water. That's another uh, misconception that people have, thinking that Ohia Lehua needs a lot of water. But really, once the plant is in the ground and it shows some active signs of growth, you can reduce the watering down to maybe once every two to three days. Our next plant is called Ahina Hina, and there's a lot of native plants that have Hina Hina in the name or are actually called Ahina Hina. Uh, another example of a plant called Ahina Hina is the silver swords that are found on the summit of Mauna Kea, Haleakala. Well, this Ahina Hina is also found on Haleakala uh, near the summit. Uh, and the thing with this one is, even though it's found at a really, really high elevation naturally, uh, it can still exist way down in the, in the lower reaches as long as you provide it with a lot of sunlight. Uh, and for here, uh, even though we're on Oahu, on the windward side of Oahu where we get probably way more rain than on the summit of Haleakala, uh, we're still able to keep this plant thriving because we just give it as much sun as we can possibly give it and not as much water. Uh, this plant probably only gets watered once a week. So, and, and this plant will let, actually let you know if it's getting too much water because it'll become not as silvery, shiny, it'll, and it'll actually turn more green. And once it turns more green, it's either getting too much water or too much shade. So you want the plant to look nice and silvery. Our next plant here is called Kawila. And Kawila is very valuable for Hawaiian, uh, you know, in Hawaiian culture. It was used to make pretty much every type of weapon, every type of tool uh, was used with Kawila. And this particular species is Colobrina opposidifolia, which is today found only on the islands of uh, Hawaii, Hawaii Island, and Oahu. Uh, and on both islands, the populations are really low, so this plant is actually listed as an endangered species. Um, and once that plant has that label, endangered species, a lot of times people think, oh, I can't grow it, it's really difficult to grow, it's endangered. But in actuality, the reason why it's endangered has really nothing to do with how difficult the plant is to grow, but more, uh, more dependent on outside sources like goats and deers that come in and actually eat the plant uh, and habitat destruction caused by humans. So. Uh, especially on the big island where this plant is found, it was, it's located where all of the cows are, all the pastures are today. So all of the cows pretty much ate all of these, uh, all of these trees and all of the new baby seedlings that were popping up. But Kawila, if you, same thing with uh, Ahina Hina, is you give it a lot of sun and not too much water and it'll get into a really nice tree. Extremely hard wood. The wood is so hard that it sinks in salt water. Okay, our next plant is called Kokio. Uh, this particular native hibiscus is only found in the northwestern valleys of Kauai. And here in Hawaii, a lot of people are, are familiar with hibiscus flowers, but typically most of the hibiscus that you see in people's landscapes aren't the native ones. And uh, we, although we do have, you know, 
native red hibiscus, we have native white hibiscus, which are the only naturally fragrant hibiscus in the world. Uh, we have this nice bright fluorescent orange hibiscus. We also have a native pink hibiscus, a purple hibiscus. Um, and we even have a yellow hibiscus, which is our state flower called Ma'ohau Hele. And all of our native hibiscus are really easy to grow. Um, a lot of them are resistant to, to some of the diseases that many of the hybrid hibiscus uh, get, like those little gall bumps. And um, so there's really no reason why people shouldn't be growing our native hibiscus instead of all of these hybrid non-native hibiscus that were, you know, a lot of them were brought in from other parts of the world and could potentially hybridize with our native species, uh, diluting the genetic integrity of our native plants. So it would be, it would be, you know, valuable not only for the homeowners, but also for the whatever plants we have remaining in the wild to continue growing our native plants. And um, in Hawaiian culture, uh, these flowers were eaten and were used as, you know, to, to treat certain stomach ailments. Uh, they were even used in lay. And then our last plant that we have here is called Na'u. Uh, another Hawaiian name for it is Nanu, but this is our native gardenia. And a lot of times people don't even realize that we have native gardenias here in Hawaii. Well, the truth of the matter is we, we have three different species of native gardenias. Um, so far, this is pretty much the only one that's been put on the market for people to purchase. And it's probably the rarest one. Um, this plant right here is the grandchild of the last remaining plant on the island of Oahu. Uh, this plant is also found on Lanai up in Kanepu'u, uh, where there's a handful of plants there. But Today on Oahu, there's only one plant remaining in the wild. So altogether, uh, the native populations all combined, we're probably looking at less than 10, uh, 10 plants remaining in the wild. But what's interesting about this one is that it grows real easy. Uh, it loves dry conditions, full sun uh, to partial shade. And uh, when it blooms, the flower is, you know, about the size of this orange hibiscus right here, not much bigger than that. But it's white, uh, it's, it's single petaled, kind of like the tiare, which is a Tahitian gardenia from Tahiti. Uh, but when you smell it, it smells like a big bushy gardenia, but with coconut oil on top. So it's a real unique fragrance. And the, after it flowers, when, uh, w once the flower becomes pollinated, it, turns, it develops into a round fruit about the size of a golf ball. And inside of that, poop, uh, in <laughs> inside of that fruit, there's a, 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 a yellow pulp that was used to make a dye. And that pulp, uh, or that color of that yellow dye is called na'u. So, and also the, the wood of the plant was used to uh, make uh, house posts, but mainly for ali'i. So, but nowadays, you know, due to the same reasons why this plant is endangered. Oh, by the way, this is also an endangered species. Um, you know, a lot of times people think they can't grow it because it's so rare, but really it is easy to do. And if anybody's interested in purchasing uh, any of these native plants, we have about 140 different species of native Hawaiian plants here at our nursery, uh, as well as we provide native plants to all of the Home Depots in all of the state. So uh, if you go to any Home Depot, you can find a little section that has all strictly native Hawaiian plants and you can purchase them there or you're more than welcome to stop by our place here in Haiku Valley. Mahalo.